Colliding supercontinents, dinosaurs, sea monsters, you might have been able to see this all from your backyard if you lived in Dallas-Fort Worth a few hundred million years ago. The Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is a big place, way bigger than you might think. With an area of over 11,000 square miles, it's bigger than nine U.S. states. Take that, Maryland. Home to one in four Texans and seven million people, the DFW Metroplex is the fourth largest population center in the United States. However, I bet that most of the people that live in the Metroplex don't know much about the rocks that are under their own feet. Fortunately for us, the geology of DFW is a pretty interesting topic. The geology of the Metroplex is dominated by sedimentary rocks deposited during three time periods. These are the Pennsylvanian, deposited 300 million years ago, the Cretaceous, deposited between 165 million years ago, and the Quaternary, which were deposited on the banks of rivers tens to hundreds of thousands of years ago. To the west, we can see exposed Pennsylvanian sediments. In the center, Cretaceous sediments cover most of the Metroplex, and then fingers of Quaternary sediments are deposited along the banks of the Trinity River and its tributaries. Geosciences group these sediments into formations based on time of deposition and type of rock. These formations are then put into groups to help make them easier to talk about and understand. What do you get when you slam two massive continents into one another? The answer is the supercontinent of Pangaea. This collision during the Pennsylvanian formed a great mountain range that once rose on the eastern side of the metroplex. This marked where the two ancient continents of Laurentia and Gondwana crashed into one another to form Pangaea. The magnitude of forces involved in this collision also deformed the rocks nearby, creating the Ouachita Mountains and the Fort Worth Basin. All we can see today are sedimentary rocks of this Pennsylvanian age that are exposed in the westernmost part of the metroplex, where you can climb walls of conglomerate and hunt for Pennsylvanian aged fossils at mineral wells. The Fort Worth Basin is home to the prolific natural gas fields of the Barnett Formation and is buried beneath the Cretaceous sediments in the heart of the Metroplex. The mountain ranges near Dallas were worn down by 200 million years of erosion and then when the sea started to rise about 100 million years ago, whatever hills were left became buried under these Cretaceous sediments. These sediments show the rapidly changing nature of the area at this time. Because of the rise in sea level, we see beach sand and shallow water limestones. DFW is home to some beautiful beachfront property, and we can even see the tracks of dinosaurs that walked along this ancient beach. As sea level rose even higher, the sediments were deposited in deeper and deeper water, forming the early Cretaceous sediments of the Comanche group, which are well exposed in Fort Worth. About 95 million years ago, lands to the north in Arkansas rose suddenly and a great river transported sediments into broad delta that covered the metroplex, depositing sandstones and shales of the Woodbine Formation. Dinosaurs like hadrosaurs returned to the region during this time. Once uplift in Arkansas ended, the seas returned and rose faster. This was late Cretaceous time, a time when the metroplex was drowned beneath a broad deep sea. In fact, sea level rose so much that a broad seaway covered the entire middle of the United States, known as the Western Interior Seaway. The warm, clear sea was perfect for single-celled floating plants called foraminifera. Untold billions of these lived in the Dallas Sea, and when they died, their microscopic skeletons sunk to the bottom. This process continued over millions of years to form the Austin Chalk, which is the bedrock for most of Dallas. Now, I promised you sea monsters, and they're finally here. The waters of the interior seaway were inhabited by giant marine reptiles, apex predators like the mosasaur and plesiosaur. These monsters were up to 50 feet long and dominated the oceans of the late Cretaceous. Mosasaurs were carnivorous aquatic lizards that ate just about anything that got in their way. They didn't have great eyesight or sense of smell, but if you got in this guy's way, watch out. They're thought to have preyed on fish, plesiosaurs, and even other mosasaurs. Speaking of plesiosaurs, these guys were also important predators. Well, some of them anyway. Plesiosaurs are split into two morphologies, long neck and short neck. The short neck plesiosaurs were fast swimmers that hunted fish and ammonites based on sight. 
The long net plesiosaurs were less prolific hunters and are thought to have swum near the surface, dipping its head down to hunt for similar prey. Sea level dropped rapidly after the Cretaceous ended about 65 million years ago, leaving the Metroplex high and dry once again. For the next 60 million years, not a ton happened, except for some slow erosion. Things changed dramatically during the Ice Age about 1 million years ago, when a great ice sheet covered North America just above Oklahoma and Missouri. The Metroplex was a cooler, wetter place then than it is today, turning the prehistoric Trinity River and its tributaries into a powerful river, and these rivers carved terraces and deposited sediments. Fossils of woolly mammoths and bison are found in these sediments, help paint the picture of the environment at this time. I hope you enjoyed this brief look into the geology of the Fort Dallas-Fort Worth area, and if you are interested in geology or just enjoy learning, check out some of the other videos on this YouTube channel. And then we have some links, you know, over here. And if you want to dive deeper into this specific topic, check out the video description for some of the sources we use to make this video.